Hey guys, it's been a little while since our first video, so I just wanted to give you a progress update on the things we've been doing in the game. Uh, this video will focus on UI, which I think has come a long way since the prototype, uh, but keep in mind everything here is definitely a work in progress. We have a ton more work to do. Um, the main feature of the UI, I think, at this point, would be these tabs that we put at the top. We've tried to section the UI into uh, sort of task-centric regions. So uh, we have a tab for storage and inventory, a tab for building activities, a tab for crafting, mining, and fighting. And this is just the first cut of these categories. I'm sure it will change by the time we ship. Uh, so if I look at the storage UI, I get sort of a custom palette for managing my stockpiles and my inventory of stuff. Right, so I can, for instance, click this button, and now I can make a new stockpile. And if you've seen the prototype video, this is not going to surprise you. I drag out a stockpile, and then uh, my workers are going to go grab that saw and put it in the stockpile. Uh, eventually, we'll have UI for controlling um, what kinds of items go in which stockpile. But for now, all items go in any stockpile. Um, so I can take this tree and click on it. Let's get rid of this. And uh, here's an action button, which is missing an icon, but work in progress, uh, to chop down this tree. Uh, so uh, I can tell these guys, hey, chop down the tree, and now they're going to do the choppy choppy dance and put uh, wood in my stockpile, just like you would expect. Uh, so the next section of UI is uh, the build UI, and this is build mode. Uh, so you can see the world goes into this wireframe mode so that I can more easily draw out my stuff. But now we actually have tools for putting things in the world and for defining uh, the structure of my buildings. Um, this house controls uh, sort of your palette of tools. So I click on the door and I get a list of doors that I can put down. Right now there's only one. I can build walls either in uh, squares or lines. Uh, we have a couple of roof types that you can uh, use. Uh, you can build floors, right? you can build stairs. So uh, this is sort of your construction tool picker. Um, and I can, when I choose like say I want like square walls or a boxy wall, then I just drag out a house. Um, this is uh, sort of a simplified build process that we use just to accelerate uh, dev builds. In the actual game, you'll have more of the flow in the prototype where you choose your walls and then you choose your roof type. Um, we're still playing around with that. Um, but, you know, I can pick a door and put a door here, right? Put a door here. Yay, that's great. Um, and when I'm finished, um, I can tell these guys to, to build the houses. Um, when I exit build mode, uh, the wireframes go away, my plans go away, so I can see what the actual state of the world is. Um, so that's build mode. Uh, the third region that we've been working on re recently is uh, the crafting UI, and um, here it is. So this is the least complete of the three. Um, we're just getting going on this, but uh, imagine that Illuminate Far Farstrider was uh, a carpenter. All of his recipes for like furniture and um, whatever else would show up in here. So you click one and then uh, you get the details, the stats of that item, and you'd be able to specify when you want to craft or how many to craft and then hit the button and he would go make that stuff. Um, so, I mean, our goal is to give you these sort of purpose-built UIs that are pretty tight um, and uh, get the other stuff out of your way when you're not in that kind of an activity. So I can sort of cycle between these willy-nilly as fast as I want and it's not a big deal. Um, so, I mean, that's the UI. Um, let me talk a little bit about the tech behind this, which um, is working out great for us. We were sort of struggling with UI tech for a little while, but I like the solution we came up with, which is uh, to just write everything in HTML. So this is the game, um, and this, if I can bring it up, 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 up right there, is the game running in Chrome. So how is this possible? Well, it's because everything in the UI is written in HTML and JavaScript. Uh, no Flash, no browser plugins. It's just 100% HTML, CSS, JS. Um, so you can see that this works really identically to um, how it worked in the actual game. Uh, and the reason why that's true, so here it is in the browser, here it is in the game. The reason why that's true is because the game uses Chromium Embedded to literally layer a Chrome window on top of the game. Um, so um, all these buttons that you're seeing are, are just divs styled with CSS, um, with click handlers and JS and all that stuff. Um, we use, we're pretty bare bones, we use um, jQuery, jQuery UI, uh, and that's about it. Um, so 
through that, we're able to do you know these kind of animati animation transitions and stuff like that. Um, and this has worked out great because I can test uh, and develop almost all of the UI just from the browser. I don't even need to run the game, so I can define the way things look, get the styles exactly right, um, and really only need to go into the game um, when I'm really starting to um, test corner cases and things like that. Um, and to do that, uh, this is probably my favorite uh, part of what, what uh, Tony's done with the UI. I can actually uh, remotely debug the UI using DevTools, which is uh, the built-in sort of web app dev environment that's built into Chrome. So th we got this for free by using Chrome as our uh, presentation layer. So what you're seeing here is a Chrome window that is attached uh, to the uh, Chromium embedded window that's running in our game. So I can see sort of our log, and as I click through guys, right, stuff goes into the log, in, including 404s for that missing uh, icon, which we'll have to fix. Um, and I can actually debug my uh, UI running in the game from this window. So I can go to, let's see, sources, and let's look at the unit frame right here. So these are like, this is everything. These are the CSS files, the JS files, everything, right? And uh, 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 if I can click correctly, let's go to write the refresh function just to set a breakpoint and demonstrate that I can debug this thing. I'm sure you believe me, but it's cool to watch. So when I click a guy, right, this breakpoint triggers, and I need to set like the name and description, right? So I can step, and you can see it uh, firing there in description. This guy doesn't have a description, so whatever. Um, let's do that one more time just for fun. If I click like the saw, which does have a description, here's the breakpoint, right? Set the name, set the description, right? And then uh, off we go, right? So this has been like super, super convenient. Um, and I'm really happy with the way it worked out. Um, and uh, that's about it. So uh, I'll try to do these videos a little bit more often. Hopefully you won't have to wait four months for the next one um, just to keep you guys in the loop. Uh, if you want to hear more about what we're doing, um, definitely please check out our dev vlog, which is linked uh, in the comments of this video. Uh, until next time.